Have you ever had a GFCI outlet that just trips for no reason when there's nothing plugged into it? You might think you have ghosts in the house if you believe in that thing. Well, it's not ghosts. And uh, what I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna explain to you how these things work and why it may be tripping and how to fix it easily without having to call an electrician. So what a GFCI outlet does is it protects the entire circuit for, from overload, malfunction, uh, and all kinds of different things that would create an unsafe environment for the whole circuit. The GFCI outlet is the protector of the whole circuit, not just itself and what's plugged into here. So one of the main reasons why a GFCI outlet may trip is because either the outlet itself is overloaded or something downstream from the outlet is overloading the circuit. So to explain a little deeper, the GFCI outlet is supposed to be the first outlet installed in the circuit. So if you have your electrical panel here and you've got a wire coming from the or circuit and a wire coming from the panel, the GFCI outlet is the first outlet that it's supposed to meet before it continues on to the other outlets in the circuit. So for example, in a, in a kitchen, this should be the first outlet that the wire comes in from the panel. And then from there, all of the other kitchen counter outlets that are railroaded or chained to this would be part of the circuit and protected. So even though you have nothing plugged in here, maybe you have a toaster oven plugged in on the last outlet in the circuit and it overloads and, and then this will trip and basically shutting off the power to all of the other outlets that are within the same circuit. So what you have to do is understand which outlets are part of the circuit that your GFCI is on. And uh, that's a different video that, that I have for you that we can review in, a, in another video. But once you know which outlets are part of the entire circuit, you can then start checking those outlets. And the first step here is removing these devices one at a time. So if you do have a space heater, usually these things happen in the winter with a space heater, hair dryers in the bathroom, whatever it is, you can, you can unplug those things and then reset the, the uh, GFCI and then see if the GFCI keeps tripping. So another situation could be that uh, you've got, and this is not as common, but moisture on the wires or in, in your outlets, especially if you have an exterior or outdoor GFCI could be tripping from moisture. Uh, so that could be something you can check, but it's, it's a less common situation that could occur. You could have loose wires. So if you have loose wires, it's going to create an inconsistency and a fluctuation in the, in, the, uh, in the power. And the GFCI is supposed to detect that and then trip, signaling, hey, we've got a problem in this circuit and you may want to check it. Okay, so that could be another one of those situations that, that you need to check into. You could have a neutral wire or backstab the wire that is touching the ground. Okay, sometimes those things pop off. So if you're neutral and your ground are touching, that would create your GFCI breaker from switching. Okay, so that's another thing to check into, not only with your GFCI outlet, but also any of the other outlets downstream, making sure that they're wired properly. A quick way to check that would be use one of these outlet testers that I've talked about before in other videos, plugging it in. You, Each outlet tester's got uh, some instructions and a description as to what lights you should be seeing if it's wired properly and if you get a different sequence of lights it'll tell you what's likely happening you know missing a ground wire or you've got the neutral and the uh, an open neutral and open hot all these different situations where if that's the case that could explain why you've got this thing tripping another situation could be that your GFCI has just gone bad they do not last forever they do wear out and they lose their ability to uh, to detect when there is a, a fault and also they could just automatically trip and just continuously trip when they are worn out. They're just kind of tired and they just cannot hold it any longer. So uh, they would potentially trip. I've had to replace older GFCI outlets before, even outlets that I was never even using uh, in some, in a, for example, like in a garage and I wasn't using the outlet itself, but it was protecting the circuit. And so the power going through it eventually just wore it out. So now let's talk about 
what I would do to troubleshoot and and find the, the problem and fix it. The first thing is, is if you know how to reset the button, the, the, uh, the outlet, you can uh, press the reset and test and then try to reset it one more time. And if usually what happens is if you're having this difficulty, it will not stay, it will not stick. And then it's just continuously off. You'll know most of these newer outlets will have um, a green light that tells you that everything's fine and you've got power going through it. When the green light pops off, then you know you it's tripped. Okay, it's pretty simple. And there, if you have a red light, the red light usually means that the outlet is no longer is no longer good. Okay, so what I would do at this point is I would first, like I said earlier, unplug everything on the circuit. If you unplug everything and it's still tripping, then usually I tell you to in our my videos to work your way backwards with electric. But what I would do in this situation is disconnect the wires that go from the outlet to the other outlets downstream and just have this outlet connected to the wire coming from the panel. Isolate it away from the rest of them, okay? And then see if it trips. If it still trips, then your, your issue is likely the outlet. I would change the outlet. If you change the outlet and it still trips, then you've got something between your panel and the outlet, okay? It's usually never the wire itself. It's usually gonna be the connection points. So let's say now this thing's not tripping and because you disconnected the rest of the outlets downstream. Then what I would do is reconnect the line and go to the next outlet. So you get the next outlet in and I would disconnect, I would leave that outlet connected to here and then disconnect the wires leaving that outlet going to the rest of them. And one at a time, you're gonna eventually find the one that's the problem. And it could be that it's the outlet, but likely it's your wiring that's happening there. So as you're changing those, or as you're, as you're checking those outlets, you're not just going in there, just disconnecting the wires. First, pull it out, of course, with the power off and inspect, make sure that everything's tightened properly. There's no loose wires. The terminal screws are tight. You don't have anything touching. There's no wire touching the electrical box. None of that. And um, you'll eventually find the problem that way. If you do have to replace the GFCI, it's not difficult. It's it's really to just read the instructions because they are a little bit different than, um, than wiring a regular outlet. And I've got a video on how to wire a GFCI outlet, which, which you can uh, search in my video library and find. And you're likely gonna find the situation that that's occurring. Now, one last thing I'll tell you is, is this is a, a 20 amp GFCI. And the reason why you know that is, you see this here has got a little, little line going across here. That's for a, a that's a 20 amp outlet. This is a 15 amp GFCI, okay? It doesn't have that little, that little offshoot over here, right? So you could have a situation where you've got a 15 amp GFCI and you've got something plugged in downstream that's drawing more power than the 15 amp GFCI can handle. So if you do have a 15 amp GFCI and you're gonna go replace it, you may wanna consider using, sw swapping to a 20 amp because there's a good chance that it will not trip because you've got a 20 amp here and it's it's made to be able to to handle more of the load only if you've got 12 gauge wire you need to have a 12 gauge wire if you're using a 20 any kind of 20 amp outlet hopefully that helps now what i'd like for you to do not only would i like for you to give me a like on this video if you've learned something not only would i love for you to just subscribe to the channel but i also want you to let me know what problems you're having with your GFCI outlet, whether or not you've ran into this before, if you've been able to fix it, all of those different things. I'd love, I would answer your questions pretty quickly in the comments section. And um, also check out some of my other videos. I have everything I have in my libraries to help the homeowner. And they're all things that you can do by yourself, just like, just like this repair, or this, uh, this troubleshooting problem. So once again, thanks everyone for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.